I don't personally do the whole New Year's resolution thing. I haven't done ever. And when I try setting goals, I, I don't bother with the whole smart goal thing. I do what's called open goals, which doesn't really have a measurable, smart, realistic time, but all those sorts of things. It's just a, this is what I would like to do. And I'm going to measure myself as I go through it, whether I'm being to me integral to those goals or not. So when I'm planning for 2024, which is what I guess you could say I'm doing now, it's not really, I'm going to sit down and plan for a half an hour, an hour. I'm just going through the document that I have, which is called a philosophy of practice and seeing what I want to change, shift or anything about it, which I do regularly. So when I go into my obsidian, you can see here, this is my philosophy of practice document. Part of it's philosophy and the other part is obviously practice. In the middle, you can see here, this is the OECD learning compass. And for those unfamiliar with the uh, educational science and the OECD, essentially this is what educational systems or the, the plan for educational systems uh, is looking at as a framework uh, up till 2030. So this isn't a curriculum that you need to follow. This isn't a you've done it or you haven't done it. This is a framework for people to try and navigate and follow, giving in an ideal world students agency to control their own learning. In the center, we have competencies because at the end of the day, each individual learner wants to be competent at certain things. Competency being able to apply skills, attitudes, knowledge and values in specific contexts with however you would define success. And I use this as my own framework, which I mean, I've, I've had these things as my framework since my undergraduate degree in sports coaching, because all of these things obviously are very consistent across the board, whether you're learning inside of school, learning inside of online education or at work or in any environment, really. But I find this image quite nice to center me, I guess you could say, with the or a reflection cycle, action, reflection, anticipation around the edge. Now, I don't entirely agree with it because reflection is in, on and after reflection, which it goes into, into more detail and OECD documentation. But I think it's a nice image to capture what it is that I'm trying to do with the core foundations being the elements that I'm looking to focus on when it is that I'm reflecting or planning or looking at what it is that I'm doing day to day when it comes to the actions, which as I scroll up, you can see here are all of my, what I would class as actions, all the things that I do. You could class them as projects, even though they don't have deadlines, they could be areas, but if these are areas, then these are other areas, or maybe these are categories or labels, and these are areas, D terminology is difficult, but you can see what I've got here. I've got a group, so when you right click, create group, I have a group for health, work, community, and learning. Each of these categories uh, are actually related to the OECD compass uh, directions, OECD goals, and the UN standard goals as well for education. They also include areas like equity and uh, reducing poverty, poverty, reducing starvation, all those sort of world goals are in there. I don't really want to do that myself because I don't think I have that much of an impact. <laughs> uh, and this is a personal philosophy of practice, not global. So I don't have any of those things in there. However, I do have like I say, health, work, community, and learning. And you'll notice that there are things that overlap. Educational Science YouTube as part of learning, because that's what I'm doing. I'm doing video essays on that second channel. I'll leave a link uh, in the card in the top right if you haven't seen it. Uh, but you can also see it's in work, because even though I'm doing the research for these video essays in my own spare time, I can, if I want to, which most of the time I do, I can turn them into a video. So. The reason I classify that as work is because I can earn from it. I can earn from posting a video on YouTube, whereas the video essays or research essays, you could I could say I do. I'm not working, but I'm still learning. So maybe I do some research into Bloom's taxonomy. I haven't made a video about it, so it's not technically work and it's not related to anything that I have done directly related to anything that I've done that has earned me money, which is how I would class as work. Work is financially related, whereas learning is anything else, <laughs> uh, which is where reading and discord and podcasts also come in because when I'm reading something, whether it's a fiction book or non-fiction book, I'm still learning something, whether it's related to an area that I could earn from it, that's not obvious to me typically at the time. Similar with discord, I could be involved in a conversation. I could be learning different things, different ways to interpret things, perceive things or terminology behind words or anything like that. So to me, it's still learning. It's still part of what it, what it is that I want to do with my time, but it's not work related. Uh, 
work typically is just video editing because you need to do that to make it into a video or it's doing word editing so looking at the copy looking at drafts and making sure spelling grammar that sort of stuff is there which to me is not fun which is why it's in this work category uh, and then podcasts again this has sort of come down the list previously i was not a big reader as in i don't read i didn't read in my spare time it was work related so i was reading academic articles for work related research but i actually moved this out of work into learning a few months ago now which is an example of how this is dynamic it's very fluid uh, so now reading is part of learning because i'm reading books in my own time just for fun and for learning rather than it being for work because previously that was down here and it was hardly ever done but it was there because i needed to research but now i, I do the reading outside of uh, the podcast has now dropped down because a lot of the podcasts repeat things that i've heard before and i don't like repeated information so uh, i've reduced the priority i guess you could say of listening to podcasts now depending on who they are so yeah and uh, then when we go to community you can see family right at the top it's also right at the top for health because i think that family should come first so family is at the top of health and community the reason it's in community is because even though i have my close family so mum, dad and sister there are other people in the family that i want to engage with then discord similar it's engaging in different communities not necessarily communities you'd think up so maybe the zwift community for health related cycling i'm talking with people in there about who knows what stats maybe it's heart rate variability or anything that's exciting for well the the specific discord communities that i'm in that's writing authors podcasts zwift like i say uh and chess discords as well which is part of health and hobbies so discord is just engaging with other people and talking with other people which is what i do a lot of the time so you can see if i'm not talking with my family i'm often most of the time <laughs> on discord talking with people and that's where podcast the, my, the own, my own podcast or my podcast that I do with John comes in because that's also community but that's community face to face talking with other people and on the podcast is where I, I also categorize the zoom calls the zoom meetings that I do with other people as well Twitter down the bottom and the reason Twitter's on there is I have intentional uses for all of these things TikTok's not on here because I don't intentionally use it and I don't, I don't really go on TikTok like ever uh, but twitter i am on but i'm not on it just to scroll through randomly and i'm not on it to just flick through quotes that people can get from anywhere i go on twitter to have a conversation with someone maybe that's a quote tweet because i disagree with something that someone said or a quote tweet because i want to surface something that someone said or i tweet about something that i've experienced or someone else has experienced or i contribute to an, an element of some sort of conversation i don't go on there just to look at random things that people are saying that there is a purpose which is very similar with the discord academy but the discord academy is me sharing ideas and thoughts specifically to those that want to know exactly how i work and the work section you can see this youtube channel is now second previously that one was down here <laughs> um, but in 2024, this is going to take my priority. Educational Science YouTube is going to take my priority because that's where I want to spend my time. I want to spend my time looking at educational policies, looking at how online and offline and formal educational policies, behaviours and theories all relate inside of moving education forwards because I think personally education is where one <laughs> things are interesting and two where i think the world needs to move towards especially with the amount of misinformation in the world online spread all over the place digital literacy being one of the key uh, skills you can see skills down here that the oecd is trying to push and one that i would like to encourage through this channel looking at some of the other related theories and concepts such as uh, cognitive load theory and cognitive psychology all of those areas from ecological psychology of course with ecological dynamics being my field of research uh, and we've gone through health but these are the areas of health that i focus on so family first then food because food's more important than exercise for me anyway and then we've got exercise then reading and chess just as like some side hobbies i guess you could say all of this very specific to words i, I try and keep words specific which is why i have my lexicon over here which are any concepts words and terms related and that is heavily influential in these little summary cards i guess you could say uh, I, w I was watching a presentation, well, a presentation, a conference a while ago from the Welsh educational system, and they use the OECD compass and tried to map it to their own Welsh curriculum compass, and they came up with these uh, 
like the words at the top of each bullet point so ethical informed citizen healthy confident individual and these resonated well with me so i thought you know what i'm just going to use those and take those and put them in my philosophy of practice so when i'm acting i can ask myself if i come in and go you know what my priorities change am i still a healthy confident individual if i'm not as confident then i know i need to challenge that in some way and then obviously adding in the different bullet points underneath to keep me somewhat aligned with where it is that I want to go. And I can, if if I'm not sure about what's going on, or I, I just want to see, okay, where did I plan myself to be at right now? I can come into this file and immediately come to the top and be like, oh, um, I'm actually spending less time on this thing than I planned, or I'm not spending enough time on this. And that's where the concept of periodization uh, is used for me that comes from the strength and conditioning my master's degree and i maintain some areas so maybe i'm maintaining my health most of the time so this sort of just sits the same but i want to focus on so i want to improve educational science research or i want to prove the danny hatcher channel or i want to improve the academy so if i'm improving the academy the focus will be up the top and the others will come down and then i will maintain these other areas so maybe there's been an argument at home and i disagreed with something that dad said so i'm going to focus on building up that relationship again or doing whatever i need to so we're not just like scout scowling at each other um, which means these other areas will take a a drop in my focus and where my energy is directed at and i can do that quite easily here if i feel like okay i'm getting a little bit overwhelmed or i'm getting a little bit tired what's going on i can quickly come in here or look at my uh, calendar and see oh, okay actually i'm i'm focused on all three of these at the same time trying to deal with a a fight that i have with my sister or an argument i had with my mum, and it's like okay yep there's too much i need to refocus whatever it is <laughs> uh, that i need to do for my time which is where i go into my calendar and having this all here to me is is a nice guiding framework obviously with the, with the uh, image but a nice guiding light single source of truth whatever jargony word term you want to put on there i just come in here and go okay yeah i I've, i'm overdoing myself i should probably shift somewhere else and i i say that but obviously this is dynamic so sometimes i don't come in here for two three months and i can shift what it is that i'm doing because i'm engaged i'm constantly engaged with the intentional choices I've made. So Twitter, I know it's an intentional choice. So whenever I'm on Twitter, I recognize I'm on this too much or I'm not on this enough to keep up to date with notifications from BBC Education or the, the National Institute of Teaching who have posted something that I haven't updated or seen, it's in bookmarks, those sorts of things. If I want to be engaged in that, I'm constantly going. This is where the action reflection uh, anticipation cycle goes through and I'm just constantly engaged in the philosophy of practice even though i'm not on the file that's how i look at this this is how i'm planning i guess you could say for 2024 but that's a bit of an insight into how the how some of the thinking behind my behind my actions happens